What's up, YouTube? It's Logan, the metal and beer snob, and tonight I'm here with one of my personal problems that I've been dealing with over the past, well, really my lifetime, but uh, especially over the past six months. So, I recently moved, and I've been on a budget since then. I'm not able to go to my typical online you know, web stores and buy full-priced items or go to record stores on you know, album release days and stuff, or even buy full-priced records willy-nilly. I have to be a lot more selective of what I am buying and when I am buying it. So, lucky for me, and unlucky for uh, the brick-and-mortar consumer, I have discovered that Amazon somehow has like this crazy partnership with this record label called Metal Minds. And there's just a lot of interesting deep cut albums on Amazon from this label that are all about five to eight dollars each. I just want to show off some of the highlights that I've picked up from Amazon that have been released on Metal Minds and kind of just raise awareness. If there are any people out there who are just looking for just good metal CDs, new, that are about five bucks a pop, keep an eye on Metal Minds, but first, let's crack a beer. Similarly with beer, I have uh, gone to other areas to find quality beer for cheap prices. So around here, there's a salvage grocery store where mm, where all the stuff that gets dropped off the delivery trucks and like ends up dinging itself on the ground, they all end up here at this salvage grocery store. So I'm, I'm able to find just a variety of just crazy random beers from all over the country here for literally like 60 cents a beer. I can buy a six pack of just choose your own for four dollars. Most of them are expired and most of them have dings and you know bruises on them but you know what? I'm drinking on a budget. I can't be picky. So, here. This is a Polliner Oktoberfest. Out of season for sure, but it still tastes good. <laughs> Cheers to finding the deals. Bought this glass from Goodwill. Fits the theme. So first, a brief introduction. So Metal Mind Productions is a Polish record label that was founded in 1987. And it really has mainly just done uh, back catalog reissues. Uh, I see that it's gotten in trouble in the past for doing reissues without like letting certain metal bands know that they were re-releasing their albums, which, I mean, yeah, that's some shady shit right there. As far as I know, all the stuff that I have is well legal and authorized because there were certain uh, licensing deals that they made with Roadrunner Records as well as Nuclear Blast Records for you know some of these albums just to reissue and keep them in print and a lot of the albums that I see that are on Metal Mind are not necessarily the ones that you would first look for you know when you think of some of the bands that I'm about to talk about these albums are not like, oh yeah, that's the must own right there. No, these are like the, oh, if you have to buy a fourth or a fifth album from this band, maybe you should get this one. <laughs> but for $5, you know, I'll take the risk. And honestly, a lot of these bands are tough to come by because guess what? No one's reissuing any of the, their albums, and especially this mid-era catalog. So, I think... Metal Mind Productions, interesting uh, legal stuff aside, they are doing uh, the Metal God's work, so I appreciate them. Alright, the first band that I saw that I was willing to take the risk on with this was Benediction, and specifically it was their 2008 album, Killing Music. Once again, I think this was originally released on Nuclear Blast and uh, relicensed by metal mine but yeah this is well within the groovier era of benediction but 
at the same time, it's not as bad as a certain album I'm about to talk about. Um, it's definitely got a bit more death metal sprinkled in, and I think it's got some really heavy-hitting songs on here, too, that definitely measure up to the classic Transcending the Rubicon era Benediction. This is actually the first Benediction album I ever purchased because of Metal Mind. I had never really seen any of their releases out in the wild for an affordable price, so <laughs> I jumped on it. Track 2, The Gray Man is great. Track 6, Dripping with Disgust is cool. And then there's some fun covers at the very end. Largactyl, which is an Amoebics cover, is pretty cool. The other thing about Metal Mind, they always hand number their stuff out of 2,000. I don't know if they're only actually pressing 2,000, but for now I'll believe them. This is 10.99. And then the other benediction album I hinted at is Grind Bastard. And this is, of course, what we're jamming to in the background. I don't know, this is a fun album. I mean, it's pretty one note. Dude, you can't go wrong with Deadfall, and their cover with of Electric Eye, track six, is, uh, well, it's a Judas Priest cover, which is often not advised, but you know what? I'll let it pass on here. And if we're wondering, number 1585 out of 2000. So from mid-era Benediction albums that no one cares about, we're going to another classic band. And I'm talking about Sinister. This is their album, Afterburner. And this is probably one of my favorite Metal Mind albums that I've picked up, and really is an underrated Sinister album. Well, this is the first Sinister album I was able to purchase on physical format. Across the Sticks and Hate has been, they've been long uh, standing albums for me that I've just, list, you know, streamed throughout the years. I was definitely a fan of being able to pick this up for five bucks, and I don't know, I really do enjoy this album. It's blistering and not terribly groovy. Like, it actually still has that classic death metal vibe to it. So, I don't know, I think mid-era Sinister is kind of underappreciated. But this is number 410. Look at me moving up in the world. And then from there, another underrated death metal album from an underrated death metal band, which also had a groove metal phase. Fucking Gorefest. And this is their album, La Marte. This came out in 2005, also on Nuclear Bass. Yeah, this is kind of Gorefest finding their footing again after a certain erased album. And it's good. Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't have the history with Gorefest to really be able to dive in too deep. But this is a very serviceable album, in my opinion. And probably at least a 7.5 to an 8 out of 10. But here, we brag. Number 89. And then from there, I want to highlight a fairly underrated melodic death metal band from Germany. I'm talking about the band... Night in Gales. This is their 1998 album, Thunder Beast. This is also an original Nuclear Blast album that is being reissued by Metal Mind. The album artwork sucks. I don't know, we just got a fucking crazy dude. Don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but this is uh, one of those melodic death metal albums where it's very purposefully fast-paced. Like, these songs are not super drawn out. They're not leaning into the progressive element. They really still have a thrash attack to them. Like, this is an intense album, and I think I, I definitely appreciate that. It's kind of to your throat more so than what a lot of these melodic death metal bands were doing back in 1998. So, I'm definitely happy to to own this one. Thunder Beast is definitely a keeper. Nightingales also has their debut album, which was from a year earlier, Towards the Twilight, on uh, Metal Mind as well. I'm going to be picking that up shortly. And then from there, I wanted to show that it's not just 
Nuclear Blast Death Metal albums on Metal Mind. There's also Nuclear Blast kind of black metal albums. Look at this. This is Grave Worm with their album Engraved in Black. So Grave Worm is one of those fun, like, uh, gothic borderline symphonic black metal bands. Grave Worm has both German members and Italian members, so kind of an international act, if you will. Yeah, this is my favorite album by them so far. It's either this or their 1999 album, As the Angels Reach the Beauty. This one from 2003 is an easy contender, too. It's borderline has that, like, symphonic death metal sound to it, like, I hear that septic flesh kind of sound. It's very much a wall of like overproduced noise at times, but it's still it's a it's a beautiful album and it's very powerful. Like they really lean into the riffs and lean into as I said creating a wall of sound in the atmosphere. Number 900, a nice even number there. And then I wanted to end on my favorite album that I've gotten from Metal Minds. This is what I would consider a modern technical death metal masterpiece. Probably one of the peaks for what I consider the original like tech death heydays of the 2000s. This is Decrepit Birth with their album Polarity. So yeah, this came out in 2010 and I think really kind of wrapped up an era for what technical death metal was. And this is just a kind of crushing death metal album while at the same time has this beautiful uh, progressive metal feel, very much similar to what Chuck was doing on The Sound of Perseverance. Like there's just some guitar melodies that swell and lift you up as a listener. Ignite the Tesla coil, the opening like instrumental is beautiful, that goes right into Metatron. Um, Solar Impulse is another beautiful song, but really the guitar melodies here take center stage along with the drumming. I mean, this I believe has Samus as the drummer, and God, this is a great album. And even to seal the deal that I was talking about, it includes a cover of Death. Track 12 is See Through Dreams. Best album of the lot and a highlight for what technical death metal was back in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And I think hopefully will be considered a classic for years to come. And as you can imagine, with a catalog like Nuclear Blast Records and Roadrunner Records at their disposal, there are a lot of other um, Metal Mind albums to keep an eye on. And then I'm continuing to just watch out for uh, They fluctuate in price on Amazon and will either be fully out of stock or will be like 10 bucks. But very reliably, they will always dip down to that like eight or five dollar range and that's when <laughs> like an opportunist vulture I strike some of the uh, bands that I'm looking out for there are always do scented albums available typically I've been wanting to get into do scented for a while but they're one of those bands where I'm just never gonna pick them first there's always a band I would rather buy than do scented but Eventually, I will get one of their albums. Uh, there's also the grind band Defecation available. And this is, of course, Shane Embury's from Na Napalm Death, one of his other bands. And then other two, real quick, Death Doom band called God Glory. They have one or two of their albums that I often see available. It's typically either their 1999 album, Resurrection, 
or their 1996 album Shadows Dance. And then finally, there's a Samuel album that I've been looking out for. And whenever I see it and I don't have another thing I'm going to get, the album Solar Soul will be mine. And it said I probably would only ever buy that album for like five bucks, but thanks to Metal Minds, I'll be able to fulfill that dream. Cheers. My question to you all, is it worth it to buy these type of albums that aren't necessarily your first picks when it comes to collecting? I mean, if the price is right, why not go for it? But am I still wasting my money on potentially a subpar product? I don't know. If you listen to it, that means you like it, right? What are your opinions of Metal Mind and just cheap back catalog records in general? Let me know. But anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. You cannot destroy me, no way.